Billionaires are having a field day playing 4D chess, and all we can do is watch with bated breath. Elon Musk announced that Tesla will no longer accept Bitcoin payments due to environmental concerns. Giga Chad Mark Cuban fired back. Michael Saylor remained diamond handed and bought the dip. And Vitalik Buterin reportedly rug pulled retail and TikTok on dog coins for charity. Let's take a look at the news and the Bitcoin chart and try to figure out what the hell is going on with this market. Stay tuned. What is up, everybody? I'm Scott Melker, also known as the Wolf of All Streets. Before we get started, please subscribe to the channel. Go ahead and hit that thumbs up like button right down below. Now, we had mass euphoria in the market, and it's been an interesting couple of days. As a result, as I tweeted a few days ago, there were a lot of top signals around, not particularly concerned long term, but was sort of expecting a bit of a flush of all of this euphoria and excitement. Well, we saw it in spectacular fashion. And what were those top signals? I don't know. Tom Brady putting laser eyes on his profile. Mark Zuckerberg talking about the name of his goat being Max and Bitcoin. And of course, the dog coins, Dogecoin, Shiba being the currencies of the future. Absolute retail insanity. Well, usually after you see that kind of thing, you see a flush. Those people go from being greedy to fearful, and then the market can continue back up. We're going to talk about all the news, but first I want to take a look at the Bitcoin chart and see what we are watching. First, we have the daily chart here. These are levels that I've had drawn on my daily chart for ages, so no huge surprises at the moment. The, the real story that I've been sharing with the newsletter over and over again was the inability of Bitcoin to get back above 58,986, right around 59K. As you can see, that was a key level after this drop. That was really the top. And we have one, two, three candles with bearish SFPs which are those wicks right above, meaning that there was a lot of selling interest and liquidity in that area, and then the drop, and then ultimately this massive drop down. Uh, on the plus side, we do have a bounce right out of a perfect demand zone, and right here at the top, right around 46,000. I've had this area marked on the chart for a very, very long time. So really no surprises that if we had a drop, at least temporarily, we would see demand in that area. This zone goes all the way down to around 43,000. People have been watching that area for, for literally weeks, it seems like. If that red area ultimately fails, I would expect that the next support would be this area down between 37,000 and 39,000. Totally possible that we could go there, but no reason to believe that that's going to happen as of yet. Now, looking into the four-hour chart, we get a lot of information. Bitcoin's been trading in this range since it topped around 65,000 and bottomed around 47,000. A lot of interest around this dash line. That's called the equilibrium or the EQ. It's the 50% level of a trading range. When you see this much action around it, it really confirms that your range is correct. Look at all that resistance there. Almost exactly on the line. Support, perfectly support. Then like four or five candles with perfect support and a break down. And once you see a break of that EQ, you expect a trip to the range bottom. Of course, when we broke above, we did not get the trip to the range top that you would expect. TA is just a guess. Nothing happens every single time. What's interesting is this happened before that Musk tweet. We lost the uh, mid-range of this range, and then price continued down on the tweet, which you would expect, like I said, with that breakdown. And then we got the 50% reactionary bounce that I talk about all the time. And then price is now consolidating. The question is, is it consolidating to go up again or down? What I do like here is that we had a sweep of the range lows, really beautiful, down to about 46,000. After breaching that 47,000 low from back in April, that indicates there's liquidity being engineered down in this area that whales and big, big money were interested in buying down here and likely even push price down. When you get that sweep of the lows with this big wick, it's generally pretty encouraging. Also notably, we had a lot more volume on the drops previously. This one around the same, but these were much, much bigger sell-offs than the one that we just saw, which is always important because volume definitely confirms price action. And the biggest candle here was green, not red. For my case, gray, not blue. So there was more buying at the bottom than any of the selling before. That is encouraging for me. Now, you know that I love a good bullish divergence. We do have bullish divergence confirmed on oversold RSI on the hourly chart. Of course, we now have potential hidden bearish divergence, which you expect after that and somewhat cancels that div. But that was a great bottom signal. If you know me, you know that I look for it on the one hour and then I look for another little drop to get one on the four hour, maybe six, 12 daily and build those divs up. But this is the first initial potential sign of a reversal for me. And if you like to trade oversold bull divs. Now let's dive 
into the news. First, of course, Elon Musk, Tesla, and Bitcoin. Tesla has suspended vehicle purchases using Bitcoin. We're concerned about rapidly increasing use of fossil fuels for Bitcoin mining and transactions, especially coal, which has the worst emissions of any fuel. Of course, he goes on to say Tesla will not be selling any Bitcoin, and we intend to use it for transactions as soon as mining transitions to more sustainable energy. Now, listen, uh, the, the, the takeaway for me is that Tesla is not going to sell any more Bitcoin, to be honest. But listen, Elon Musk is still a genius. Uh, we still love the guy, but I think he's just wrong here because this energy debate has been debunked over and over and over again. And there's so much irony and conflict here in the thinking, because first of all, we all know that nothing has changed in the energy debate since Tesla decided that they were going to accept Bitcoin for cars, right? The situation is no worse. In fact, Jack has made the point, the CEO of Twitter, that Bitcoin is an opportunity for the renewable energy. We know that over 75% of energy used for Bitcoin is renewable. And Elon Musk even engaged with those tweets that Jack had saying that he was correct. So it takes a bit of uh, cognitive dissonance to figure out how he would have flipped his opinion so quickly based on no new evidence. It seems like maybe there was some strange pressure and something that we don't quite know about here. But also, nobody is buying a Tesla with Bitcoin. There's probably like seven people on the planet that would use a perfectly beautiful deflationary asset to buy a car that loses, you know, 25, 30% of its value the minute that you drive it out of the lot. It was always more of a publicity stunt and not something that people in the United States certainly were going to do with a taxable transaction to sell their Bitcoin to buy the car. So it's more of a symbolic gesture, but not one that should be moving the needle at all for Bitcoin adoption or that should concern people and spook the market. As we know, when we see a drop like this, usually whales use that news to make a frictionless move through the market. People were not selling their Bitcoin because they can't buy a Tesla with it. That's stupid. That idea is absurd. What happened is that there were people there waiting for a perfect catalyst to make some money selling some Bitcoin, and they were able to do that. But there's so much cognitive dissonance here. The banking system uses far more electricity than Bitcoin, and they're not going to stop accepting dollars, right? Just the day before, Elon Musk put up a poll asking if Tesla should accept Doge as payments. Doge is also a proof of work coin and has the same environmental implications. None of this makes much sense. But at the end of the day, Bitcoin is much stronger than the tweets of a single billionaire. Maybe it moved as a result of the tweet. Maybe it was just going to drop because Tom Brady has laser eyes and because SHIB token was absolutely insane and unreasonable. It doesn't matter. Nothing fundamentally has changed for Bitcoin. And of course, you know, when you get uh, when you get a situation with like this, the other billionaires fire back. Mark Cuban counters Elon Musk, says Mavs will continue to accept Bitcoin. His exact tweet, we at Mavs.com will continue to accept Bitcoin ETH Doge because we know that replacing gold as a store of value will help the environment. Shrinking big bank and coin usage will benefit society and the environment. That's a much more reasonable take. We know that the environmental impact of Bitcoin is real. It's worth discussing, but it's being addressed. And that's what actually matters in this situation. And then we have our other favorite billionaire, Michael Saylor, who just calmly bought a shit ton more of Bitcoin. MicroStrategy has purchased an additional 271 Bitcoins for 15 million in cash, at an average price of 55,387. He bought the dip. He didn't worry about if it was the bottom of the dip. He bought it 55, prices around 50. No big deal. Michael Saylor has diamond hands. Michael Saylor has conviction. He does not care what Elon Musk has to say or what the chart has to say either. That's the reasonable approach that most companies and individuals should take just dollar cost average and buy the dip. If you believe Bitcoin is going to 200,000, 300,000, a million, you don't care if Tesla's accepting payment in Bitcoin or not. The next huge story, Vitalik Buterin dumps his SHIB, price tanks 30% in one hour. I literally talked about this in a video yesterday. I've been talking about SHIB and Doge and the irrational exuberance and that these are not real assets, they're memes. And if you touch them, you're gambling. I've been talking about this for as long as these coins have been pumping. These morons send 50% of their supply to Vitalik Buterin's wallet, assuming that he wouldn't sell it. So what did he do? He absolutely rug pulled everyone, sold it all alongside other tokens like Akita, I don't know, Dachshund, German Shepherd, Doberman Pinscher, whatever other stupid dog coins people are trading. And he sent the money off to charity. It was absolutely irresponsible for them to just randomly send 50% of their tokens to someone's wallet. And this is what happens. Regardless of your thoughts, I hate 
seeing people lose money, even if they were making a dumb investment. I try to warn them over and over and over again. This was somewhat inevitable. And you can, you know, take, you can be mad at Vitalik Buterin for doing it, or you can take the view that he was doing something for charity. That's totally up to you. Regardless, SHIB token had no value. It was going to dump eventually. And finally, probably the most ironic story that I've seen in a long time, U.S. stocks closed down on inflation concerns. Yesterday, the stock market continued its three-day slide because inflation numbers came in and they were higher than expected. Why the hell would you sell hard assets like your stocks and your Bitcoin because inflation is going up so that you can get more dollars? Dollars are losing their value. Selling your hard assets into dollars on this news is absolutely asinine, is the opposite of what you should be doing. If you believe that inflation is a problem, which it is, and you see the numbers that confirm that it's a problem, you buy more hard assets. You buy more Bitcoin. That's it for today, everybody. I hope that you enjoy the video. Please go ahead, subscribe, hit that like button, and I will see you all tomorrow. Peace.